the cynical side of me always knew that this was coming. So not only uh, are they going to uh, have people like that involved in the industry, they're, they're literally, remember when we talked about how we're like, you know, in five years, it was very common for people to be like, you know, people who are uh, talking about uh, canceling other people are going to pretend like they were never again, like they were never for it. They're, they're going one step further and they're, and they're accelerating. They're not just going to pretend like they didn't participate in it. They're going to monetize it, which I have to respect the balls of having literally no shame as an industry goes to, to turn it into their own form of weird art. That's not art because you're hypocrites. Once again, cancel culture, the product cancel culture, the product Piers Morgan knows all about uh, it. So it says, uh, Emil Hirsch to star in cancel culture drama. My time's up. Uh, Emil Hirsch is perhaps best known for playing Christopher McCandless in 2007, uh, 2007's into the wild. I love that book. I don't know if you've read that book. I have. I is there there's something hilarious about a guy whose last big acting credit was like a guy leaving society behind <laughs> now being playing someone who's like getting rejected by society right I have a problem there's something like that's funny I I had not read that book he so. was also part of the far underrated romantic comedy the girl next door with Alicia Cuthbert and Paul Dano uh, I didn't know you were I apologize for not knowing enthusiast. That. I am not, but it is a very good movie. <laughs> I love rom coms. I do not, but it is a he very. He loves them. It's also got <laughs> Timothy Oliphant. Uh, it's very good. So it says Emil Hirsch is set to star in a film touted as cancel cult as a cancel culture drama. They're gonna make a genre out of it. Do you know how insulting that also, is? Also, like because we're obsessed with ourselves, we can only think about the things that we are doing. Like says Hollywood. Like my time's up. It, oh time's up that's like now that i think about it it's like are they just like hey me too and just flick them off there like <laughs> uh my time's up in what is perhaps a self-aware bit of casting since the actor himself has been the subject of controversy in the past i think it's like a la the bubble type of self-aware perhaps media uh so there was this i don't know if you guys ever saw if you guys remember this emil hirsch doesn't remember allegedly attacking studio executive uh his attorney oh, says yeah uh so he says he's accused of attacking a studio executive because he was drunk like mary so prophetically <laughs> said earlier you you don't just do things when you're drunk that you wouldn't at least think about doing sober yeah. what are the details of this attack uh the into the wild actor was charged in utah thursday with felony aggravated assault over an incident in which a studio executive accused hirsch of placing her in a headlock and dragging her across a nightclub table in late january i didn't know hey, it was a woman <laughs> if you were in whoa if you just went to iceland and became ezra miller you could do this, this and suffer no consequences Emil, change your pronouns all. now stat no, stat quick the 29-year-old actor is scheduled to make his first court appearance on May 16th. Hirsch is charged with attacking Daniel Burnfield, an executive at Insurge Pictures, a subsidiary of Paramount. I believe it was 2015. So did he get convicted? Uh, I don't think he got convicted. Um, he he spent 15 days. In oh yeah, yes, 15 days uh, in jail. Thank yeah. you. I, I was wrong. Uh, so we go back to here. It says the plot centers around a fictional comedian named Mickey Hoffman, who returns to the to his Midwest hometown after facing backlash for a stand up set. He's from the Midwest. Of the, course, he's getting canceled. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I want to point out how like, you know how you know Hollywood has no ideas and that they only know themselves because you don't need to be in Hollywood to be famous anymore. You could just become famous in the Midwest with your phone uh, yeah. uh, on the Internet. Mm -hmm. You don't need Hollywood. Also, like, is this a jab at uh, Bill Hader, who's from Oklahoma? And Could it be. started up as a comedian. Mitch Hedberg is from Minnesota. Be careful. Uh, uh, says, I think uh, I like Bill Hader, so I would be sad if this is like a weird oblique reference to him. Executive producer Max Adler, who previously starred in the show, the trial of the Chicago 7 on Netflix, I believe, uh, will also have a role in front of the camera. Other producers include McRae, M Michael Nassau, and uh, Pritish Shah under, under their 290 West Productions moniker. Nikki Steyer Justice, Grady Justice, Luke Taylor, and Matthew Helderman will also executive produce the film with Buffalo 8. Hirsch recently had a role in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and had starred in a number of other films throughout the years, including Savages, The Darkest Hour, Milk, and Speed Racer, among others. One of his most recognized roles was as Christopher McCandless. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, so 15 days for violently choking a film executive at the Sundance after party. Just do it in uh, Iceland and call yourself Ezra Miller. You'll be fine. Uh, that's 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 what he would say. Uh, he also completed a stint of alcohol rehabilitation because of the incident at the same time last year. I can say that if I'm looking at it from an artist perspective, if we're to believe that, you know, the best actors are actually artists and they think of art and life and they want to create something that actually has weight, 
there could be something said about making a movie like this. I'm not discounting it out of hand. What I'm saying is that my cynical side says that maybe Emil Hirsch, the actor, the artist, believes that there is a, a really great and meaningful story that tells uh, a, sto uh, uh, a bit of, um, uh, tells something about our time, the time we live in. But I don't buy that the produ I, I believe that the producers are like, we've got a whole new genre. Look at all those people who have been railing against us telling people it's they're like, awful for the last five years. They're cannibalizing each other and then making a skit out of you it. Gotta, you got to respect the hustle in a way. It's creepy, but it's like it's like they, they know how to monetize at every level. Like I almost have it's to respect so hard it. This is how you must feel whenever I start a sentence with you got to respect blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, I don't know. Like, it, it's it's a little bit weird. But, you know, <laughs> I feel like it really depends on how this it's, it's is annoying. portrays cancel culture, because like even the title My Time is Up, it's like this person is supposed to know that they have done wrong. Like, is this like comedian says something that a lot of us would think is innocuous and has to repent for it are they like i i, I i'm so wary of this project it's hard it to bothers like... me primarily because like the only um i guess successful if you want to call it that cancellations happened to ordinary people who were yes. not in hollywood and now they want to make a big joke out of it like funny haha -ha. But that literally did ruin people's lives. The people who have the financial stability to get canceled and take time off while they wait to uh, let things die down and start their next project. And a PR team to think about it for them so yeah. they don't have to. Also, like, is this narrative of this story, like, if this is supposed to be a TV show, the first season is all about him getting canceled. Is the second season about him being... It's a movie, being... not a show. Oh, okay, fair. Uh, but, like, is there a forgiveness element? Does Hollywood... Hollywood is about to tell us, like, if they think canceled people can be rehabilitated and under what circumstances. And, like, that could be real horrifying. I want to know how innocuous the actual thing he gets in trouble for is. Like, I want to know, like, is it something where we would agree, like, almost unanimously, like, you should have just never apologized for that. Tell him to F off. You didn't do anything wrong. Uh, know who you are and don't bend to the mob. Or is it going to be something where he actually does something awful? It would have to be pretty bad for me to say yeah. someone should apologize. Yeah, like, I just... Well, I, and, like, what does Hollywood think is worth Awful. being canceled about, right because yeah. you're not going to have a star of a show who gets canceled and then it's like yeah and then they canceled and then we hit them with a car and then like they're gonna i, I assume want to develop this character is this character going to come around and be like i have understood why i have been canceled or are they going to somehow make it back to hollywood under what circumstances does hollywood think it could forgive someone right. like it, this is just like such a weird look into the psychology that like i don't relate to and understand that right. like I don't know. Remember, there was a, there was people in Hollywood uh, on Twitter who believed that Chris Pratt should apologize for thanking his wife for delivering a healthy child. And he ha would have to go back to the Pacific Northwest, right? So it's not quite as impactful if we make it about that. <laughs> well, everyone hates you in, in the Pacific Northwest. If you're well, actually, if he's from Hollywood. They probably love you in the Pacific Northwest. I think he's but... from like Washington originally. Oh, uh, Emil Hirsch. No, no, uh, Chris uh, Pratt. Chris Pratt, yes. Uh, so I don't know where Emil Hirsch is from. Um, um, so it's just, uh, I, I just find this, we're going to be, I have a feeling that stuff like this where cancel culture, the marketable product for them to profit off of is going to be far more common than we'd like to believe. And it's going to turn around to become, if everyone's canceled, then no one's canceled. And then everyone can kind of speak freely and be like, well, if I get canceled, I'll just make a movie about the, it. Like, the looming threat that you could be depersoned at any moment Guess what? It's now a product. Yep. Buy it. If that's not cynical, I don't know what it like. It really is. It's so cynical and, and dystopian. <laughs> I, 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 I kind it's of. It's intentionally just... like it's almost like it's intentionally yep. trying to get us to go crazy. So, did you see? Did, did you get a chance to watch the video of Patty uh, Lapone? Is that how you pronounce that name? Yes. Uh, doubles down after F word mask tirade in Broadway backs her up. So she yelled at a person. Uh, for like their mask what was it their mask got came down it, over their nose. yeah they weren't even speaking out against masks making any kind of statement it was literally just sitting under their nose and she like spotted them yep. in the crowd i i don't even care like i like i i would i would have loved to cover it i don't care like she's 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 nuts she's 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 a she's a, a broadway actress who they said the uh, video the vitriol in her voice and the just pure disdain in her voice is so telling though. and the weirdest part about that is she sounds angry she sounds vindictive and the crowd of regular peon uh plebs cheers yeah. her on as she as she degrades this nobody in the crowd yeah. 
And that if that's not in a like a perfect encapsulation of what people who like worship Hollywood As and she people is who worship maskless, celebrities. By the way, it reminds me of uh, there's some rapper and I can't remember, but he was performing at like some Southern college, but like he's pretty well known. And he called a girl up on stage to perform like the song. And she said, J. Cole. J. Cole. She said the N-word instead of like skipping it and he like it stood on stage it was and yelled Kendrick at her. Lamar. It might have been was Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. Lamar. Okay, so it was, uh so yeah, and then he and then But they... then he like dragged her on yeah. like publicly was like yelling at her, even though it, he says it in the song, but like he can. Yes. But like can. that's I, it's just like this weird then standard. Sending her back into the crowd when you know that people are probably going to beat her up it's yeah. a trap don't do it don't don't do it so i just at this point it was it was the anger in her voice and it, i really found it's it fascinating like just um spiritually bankrupt people yep. on a stage and then and then you found this one andy andy mcdowell suffers panic attack after seeing only men on set this I, one just like sent me you can because... you can read i had no i didn't even know who the hell andy mcdowell was so you can yeah. read this one today. um there were some political undertones well, did, to this. Skip, skip the but politics. Like, okay. We don't care about the politics. Skipping to her reaction, uh, McDowell continued, I left the room and went into this fake bathroom on set and looked at myself in the mirror and said, get your shit together. It and just then the freaked music me swelled. out, not seeing any other women. It's not that I have anything against men. I don't. I just don't like big groups of them. <laughs> Since then, I've become very conscious looking around and finding the women on set for comfort. I am the opposite of this person. I worked in an all-female <laughs> office for a very long time and hated it. I had a couple of coworkers I really liked, but like... Did you hate it in general or did you hate it because it was all-female? I think I, I did not like that job very much, but it was made worse by the fact that there were only women in the office because... It just really affects office culture. I'm sure it does. We talked about hiring someone. There was like, we had a position come open and a couple of men sent in <laughs> applications. And my boss was like, no, but we can't hire a man. And I was like, please, please hire a man. Like, Isn't that illegal? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's crazy what women think they can get up to when it's just them in a group. Me too. I, but also like imagine being the only man at a company full of women. It changes that the energy completely. It was just our department that had o only women. And um, we were like, in an office that was separated from like the main campus but i cannot tell you like this girl being like they're only men i feel like i would be like excellent good wonderful 100 percent. i have been in um churches where like someone will start acting erratically and it's always men who stand up i live in west virginia so they always are like you could see them touching their side they're always armed like i'd feel so much more comfortable in an in a in a completely male set. Well, given that it's Hollywood, I actually probably wouldn't feel more comfortable in an all male set. But that's just me. What well, do they're I know? all weirdos. Uh, me, me <laughs> that's true. Male or female. But still, like, I I it's am just. Surprised. It was funny to me that it sounded like her reenacting a movie scene in her yeah. actual life, like going into this the camera bathroom you think it's her brain? and being like, "Get your shit together." Do you think it's that her brain has like? blurred so many roles that she's been like okay walk to this mark look into mirror make sure you're angled correctly so the camera can see you and say so this line nuts. me too ignited a year later uh in the fall of 2017 since then mcdallas said you see a difference on set there are a lot more women so literally like it like that's that's just the corporation saying like we're doing this because we have to because you know cynical corporations are cynical corporations uh i just i i can't imagine like it just it it bugs me. I feel bad for people who have to look at the world that way. I guess. I, in a way, I kind of wish that it were this boys' club that she I thinks mean, it is. I mean, anyone. I feel bad for anyone that has to go into a room. You know, I mean, if you've been if you if you've been abused, if something's bad I happened. No, but she no. didn't even say that. I, no, well, I know. Brett that. is assuming like an explanation. No, for, like, I'm 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 trying to don't defend this woman's I, I'm mental I'm trying to illness. extrapolate to all people, right? So Look, it's like I can understand. Like, but if you've had nothing happen to you that understands it, other than like a guy you don't like got elected to the office to, to an office that you wish he hadn't and that's your reason for now hating all men i think it's just this weird thing where like yeah if you're uncomfortable like and i have definitely been in scenarios where like i would have preferred to have one or two more women with me right like there are def there's definitely comfort in like you know some gender balance in a scenario but like this description of like being so freaked out just because something happened on the news like no one on set appears to have acted aggressively towards her. This was not a pattern. She does not 
specifically asked to always have like a certain amount of female staff like i just don't really understand because they this just reaction revel in like leaning into that hysteria and yeah. that panic um i just it's like but i'm also brainwashed by the them. patriarchy i mean i'm a huge fan of the patriarchy so i i just don't sympathize with this at all i just it- i'm not a fan of the patriarchy because the patriarchy doesn't exist if it did exist i would be a fan of it okay <laughs> uh man okay well uh we're gonna move on because i literally have no way to add anything more to that i'm just gonna move on because i can uh <laughs> thank you patriarch you're you're welcome <laughs> yes i'm taking control of this conversation and moving it forward. what an alpha uh decisive quality that you are showing in western culture Perfect. perhaps china will export pop culture crisis now that's well CCP. you know if, if you look at pcc backwards Trad Valley's own. Uh, uh snapchat new crying filter not inspired by amber heard it's too bad uh i want to know why the hell there yes, is a was. i want to know why the hell there's a filter that makes it look like you're crying that is freaking weird to me well there was another filter that's made to give you a freakish smile why so. Why? Because Snapchat's weird, know. man. I'm not tell you. A new popular Snapchat filter depicts users as a crying, blubbering mess, leading to the internet to believe that it might be inspired by Amber Heard. A theory that's total BS. A uh, very rare instance of uh, TMZ taking sides here. Right. Um, Did Snapchat say this it is was a big fake? moment? If you use the Ghost app regularly, you've probably seen this feature by now. It's an augmented reality lens that you can throw onto your mug, changing your facial expressions to one that hilariously that's hilariously sad and emotive. There's plenty of actors who could use this to help do you think get- this is snapchat being like we know you guys don't know how human emotions work so we're just letting you know this I is feel what like sad it is looks like, like. That. i still believe that the like, cia let's simulate in- emotion <laughs> i still believe that the cia invented emojis because kids were becoming un- unable to understand facial expressions oh my <laughs> and like it's yeah, sort but then of uh, I a feel new like, illiteracy. Yeah. yeah, I also feel like Zoomers are like, no, you can't use that one because even though it looks like it means this, it actually means this. That's like, the thing. Goes they so psy up the FBI in that case. That's a thing where like you have to be very careful what emoji you use because it means something very specific. Uh-huh. Uh, that's, that's like kinda... the tears streaming down emoji. That's not crying. No, that's, that's laughing. That's crying. laughing. But the laughing emoji is cringe. You shouldn't use the real laughing emoji. And it's just like. Wow, we're I, getting into layers of meaning I wasn't prepared for. I use the I use the <laughs> laughing emoji, the laughing crying emoji. You're allowed to because you're over thirty. But, but I also <laughs> use the laughing crying. I only emoji use the sideways. cat ones just to be. I to love be the cat ones. The cat ones are the only ones I use. They're but super I, cute. But you never in use the blank face. You never use two eye. in the same. You never use two in a row. You use one that's that way, and the other one where he's tilted his head. <laughs> Okay, because this is t- how we're separating generations. Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, so, wow, man. Now I feel old. This could be studied. You are the oldest person in this room. That is true. Uh, but like uh, the emoji you choose to use is uh, very telling. I'm also very lazy though, so I have like five. I'm like, I'm just gonna, pre- I'm just gonna have this emotion right now so that I can use one of these emo- one of these emojis because I don't feel like going through the freaking uh, pull down <laughs> menu and looking for a more accurate one. It's so tedious. It's so it's much. It's also work. tiresome. So <laughs> thank you. It's also tiresome. Uh, and it's got kids hooked. So kids are hooked on fake crying. I, I like when mainstream media outlets are like, the kids love it. Yeah. <laughs> Do they TMZ? Well, it might be a hit. It's also become the cause of a new rumor or joke, namely that the Snapchat heads uh, must be used Uh, Must have been used because of Amber Heard's crying last week on the stand as the blueprint. Despite the rampant speculation, we're here to tell you otherwise. A spokesperson... Okay, so they did actually get a spokesperson. So TMZ wasn't taking sides. They they did their due diligence. What if it's not inspired by... Amber Heard, but Amber Heard was inspired by it. She was like, what does More sad likely. look like? Let me open Snapchat real quick. <laughs> well, when you look at her face, she's always making the same exact expression where she's like doing this. Like, yeah, she has like, she has looked mouth, at herself in a mirror and been like, this is what sad frowning. looks like. Yeah, that's what's happening to Amber Heard. <laughs> it, oh, she's like an actress who's like, hey, I can show you. This is happy. This is scared. This is sad. Let me check with Snapchat. Yep, that one's sad. It says right down here at the bottom. It says what's what's not funny is spreading fake news and misinformation, and the Amber Heard connection is exactly <laughs> that. TMZ flexing, wow. flexing their Taking journalism. Sides. Also, like TMZ team. Like, like, <laughs> oh, okay. Flexing their journalistic integrity muscles right on right Thank on you cue. So much, they probably some interesting stories, to be honest. But yeah. like, 
I really, I stand by, I know this is probably fake news by TMZ standards, but I'm going to start this rumor. Amber Heard uses Snapchat to tell her what emotions look like, and then she uses them on stand. That's probably true. That's probably I love true. fake news. <laughs> look, it's just a theory. It's not the same thing. It's, it's, uh, yes. I'm not reporting it as fact. I'm speculating. That's what, uh, We can do that here. We're, Perhaps uh, even wildly speculating. Is there a difference between speculation and wild speculation? One's just a little more chaotic, you know? It's Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.